Hey everyone. So there's an expansion for Duelist 2, uh, or more accurately the first half of it, called Timeless Beginnings, that's just come out. And I haven't had a chance to play with the cards yet, but I uh, sure have had a chance to read them, so let's have a look through and do a cheeky, cheeky set review. I've also, um, there was a previous small release called the Founders Collection that I didn't review, and I'm going to look at that and some patch notes as well that have, from recent changes, changes to the cards. I'm mostly going to be looking at this from a gauntlet perspective. I don't necessarily see myself jumping in to build up a collection that I can play on ladder. Um, although it is worth noting that the game just got a lot cheaper um, and that orb prices got halved and this, in, this expansion can be um, acquired quite easily for just 500. I say just, I think 500 shards is a low amount. My memory is, of, of it is hazy. Um, caveats, I obviously haven't been actively playing Otherwise, you'd probably see the YouTube videos. Um, I'm mostly looking to play Gauntlet, uh, as I said, and hoping for things that will kind of shake up the Gauntlet experience and add a bit more variety. Because I think the Gauntlet is generally reflective of the way the game itself is actually designed and the way it plays. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to maybe do a little bit of lofty sort of I wouldn't go so far as to call it design critique because I think random YouTubers doing design critique is not necessarily something the world needs more of. But I'm going to try and look at it from what, how I see the game's design shaping up. Um, I think the main thing that Duelist 2 lacks at the moment, um, besides one draw cough, uh, is uh, variety. It seems that between the consistency of the cards and the small card pool, and the type of cards that are viable. Um, there isn't a lot of difference between decks of a, of a single faction. There's not a ton of things you can do. Um, and especially in Gauntlet where I think the, the weight system kind of nudges you into playing a pre-constructed deck. So what I'm really hoping to see here is some new archetypes um, or new directions the game can go in. And I do think there's there's at least a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of that. Because these cards, these cards are priced to move. Um, I think uh, the last time I did a set review, something I was concerned about was the cards that were being revealed didn't seem very strong or impactful, other than the crap, which I uh, which was nerfed as I predicted. <laughs> um, yeah, the cards that there, were, there didn't seem to be a lot of cards that were like strong in a fun way, especially. Um, but I think in this set, there's there's actually a lot of stuff that's like, no, this is clearly intended to be played in a real deck, um, and having a big injection of cards that are price to move is something the game needs so uh, as they say let's get into it um so we'll start with some lion our cards we've got augury one mana draw a card you can replace two additional cards this turn this, this seems fantastic um basically you get to replace four cards in your hand between this drawing a card and then three your three replaces um which means essentially if you don't like your hand you can take a bullion basically um that's a lot of that's a lot of impact for a card like this. I never really liked Ether Master because you were expending a card on the privilege of being able to find more cards. Um, given that you already have your built-in replace, it felt a bit rough spending a card on the privilege of getting more. This um, seems brilliant because it's cheaper. It replaces itself, so you're not losing anything to cast it. Um, and it gives you the effect immediately. So if you're digging for something specific, you can find it here. Uh, of course, it does also combo with White Widow. Um, I, maybe that will be a thing? Um, certainly in Gauntlet, that seems like a combo you could put together. White Widow is kind of okay, and this card is... I, I, I think this is a pretty easy pick. You're going to be happy to have this in your deck at any time. Cataclysm. One mana. You can only play this card if you've played at least three other cards this turn. Deal five damage to all means. Okay, I will admit, when I first read this, I thought it was better because I misread it. Um, and I thought it was if you played it as the third card. So playing three other cards and then this seems like quite a lot. Now, so we have this. And we have Aerial Rift. <clears throat> right, and then there's things like True Strike. So there's not really a lack of cheap spells. There is already, I'm told, a Fatigue Lion deck in Constructed. Um, and I think this will fit very well into that. I wouldn't... If this card is good, it's incredibly good. Like, one mana for the effect is 
so much. It's so swingy, right? If you're doing anything else alongside this that advances your game state in any way, um, or even just like sculpting your hand for a future turn, digging for a combo, healing yourself, anything. Um, and then, oh yeah, also I wipe your board. That's so strong. In Songhai, this card would obviously be phenomenal because they have way more cheap cantrips, and in particular they have ways to reduce the cost of cards, which Lionel I think maybe don't have access to quite so much. But they do have a lot of cheap spells, um, many of which are good or at least playable. Um, and I think you'll... I think this card will be quite strong. Um, I think if you're trying to put together some sort of specific combo, or if you're just trying to drag out the game and heal yourself and sit there like, this is two draw, you can enable this type of card, especially with things like Augury in the game. Um, like these two together are a very strong engine, I think. So I wouldn't be massively surprised if this got nerfed just because like, again, if it works, the effect is so powerful to just throw in as an added bonus to a turn where you already did a bunch of other stuff. Um, and being able to sit there and churn through a bunch of cards or assemble a synergy without stressing too much about, oh yeah, I also need to address my opponent's board. That's real strong. Real, real strong. Um, it obviously kills your own stuff, which is not a huge problem if you're playing, let's say, Albi Sages. Um, I think this, this combo is extremely well with some type Maiden, which is... I mean, I don't think this is particularly good in Gauntlet. It's very hard to enable, I imagine, unless you get a bunch of these. Um, but this with Suntime Maiden is a hell of a, an interaction. Um, speaking of six toughness cards that go well with, go well with cheap spells, Echo Mage. Uh, so five out of four, six. Lionel Minion, Zeal. The first time you cast a spell with this in Zeal each turn, put a one cost copy of that, copy of that spell into your action bar until the end of turn. This isn't written on the card, but I understand that the copy is uh, ephemeral. So if you, don't, if you don't cast it that turn, um, it goes away and you can't replace it which is not written there. Um, basically, it allows you to cast a spell twice. I feel like if you ever stick this through a turn cycle, um, you have won the game. I Duelist 2 is not as concerned with card advantage as it was in one draw, but being able to double up on a martyrdom and you know, clear your opponent's board very efficiently without harming your own um, is incredibly strong. Doubling up on the cantrips, aerial rift, etc. Very, very strong. Um, playing any sort of pump spell to, and then double buffing your team. Like, even this with like War Surge is actually a bunch of stats, you know, like if you have other stuff that you've played. Um, I think this plus double martyrdom on nine mana is a pretty viable use case for the card in a control deck. But I don't, I don't think you'd play it as a three of in control. Like, it's not very reliable as a value engine. It's notable that this card goes extremely well with um, Aegis Barrier, where you can protect it and another creature if you get it down on, on 7 mana. Um, obviously, there are still ways around that. It, you know, still, like Bender and stuff still punishes you, but you're not too put out by it. And uh, giving Veil to two things in one turn is pretty strong as well. Um... So a little bit mana intensive, but good. In Gauntlet, um, I think you just play this card and you put it in a safe spot and if your opponent can't kill it you and you have anything to go with it, you win. Uh, again, because if you've got spells that affect the board, you're doubling up, you're getting card advantage, you're getting tempo advantage, um, and you will get you get like utility advantage? I don't know if that's a word for it. You only have a certain number of a card in your deck, right? So in, in in Duelist 2, 2 draw means that you don't run out of gas, but you might run out of... If you've only got two copies of Martyrdom, then once you've used them both, they're gone. With Echo Mage, you can Martyrdom two things and still have another copy left. You can draw your last Martyrdom and still kill two minions with it. You know, you, you're not as forced to make those awkward decisions when you can double up on a spell. Um, and you get to kill something else with it as well. Moving on to Songhai, we have Flame Reef. Bit different from its old incarnation. Four mana two three with rush. After this moves or teleports, deals one damage to nearby enemies. So this is pretty good, I think. The old one did two damage and had four toughness, but it didn't have rush. Um, and it also benefited from Kalios's Bloodborne spell, 
This one, Miss Dragon Seal costs two, uh, which is a bit awkward. Juxtaposition still exists in its old form. So it shouldn't be too difficult to do this plus Jux for two bursts of damage. And then it can attack as well. So you, you can do four damage out of hand with it. I think compared to his old incarnation, and again, especially as the old one also had Kalios' Blood Bowl spell to benefit from, I think this card is probably not super impactful. Um, but if there's another movement option that gets added to the game, uh, it gets a lot better. Any any sort of cheap effect they can move around. In fact, I think they did print one. If I scroll down a bit, let's, let's reserve judgment on this until I've seen the other Songhai cards, because they, they did print this card. Um, so, Rhythm Weaver, 1 mana 2 1, Arcanist. After this takes damage, draw a spell. So, it's 1 mana to find a spell from your deck, uh, sort of over the course of a turn cycle. You can't do it immediately, but you'll get it the following, following turn. I like this. I kind of. There was a, a battle pet back in the day called. I think it was called Zoe. It was a 2 mana 2 3. And when it died, you put a card. You put a spell into your hand. It cost 1 less or something like that. Um, that card was good because, like, having something that you can just chuck out onto the battlefield that, like, even if it is awkwardly positioned or understated or whatever, like, in this case, is a battle pet, it still cycles. Um, this card is much better than Zoe. It's cheaper. It is controllable by you. You can take mana tiles with it. Um, and it draws a spell from your deck instead of generating one, which in Constructed is generally better. In Gauntlet, I would say the... Generating a spell is usually better because you can get stuff that you didn't get to see in the draft. Although, with the weights and things, with the, the system in this, like rarity is not so much of an impact. So, being able to cheat on rarity by generating cards doesn't really matter that much. Um, I think in Gauntlet, this card's totally fine as well. Uh, in fact, I would I would pick this. I would be very happy to have a bunch of these in my deck. Um, you're always playing spells in Songhai decks. You want the spells. The Songhai spells are extremely good, and you are often playing this game plan where you're trying to accumulate some kind of combo play, like a Mist Dragon Seal play, or a bunch of Phoenix Fires at their face, things like that. So being able to assemble a mass of spells is very good for that. Um, then we have Backstep. This, is, I think, is a very interesting, powerful card. Teleport an allied minion to the space directly behind your general. Put a blink into your action bar. And the blink cannot be replaced into space at the end of your turn. Teleport an allied minion up to two spaces. So this is exactly... This is the Kalios Bloodborne spell that I wanted to combo with Flame Wreath, except you get two of them. Um, I think this card is absurd. I Miss Dragon Seal got nerfed, and instead we get this card that triggers spell synergies twice, moves two different things, um, and is back down to one mana. It doesn't give plus minus one, and you don't have quite the same flexibility, of course. Um, but because the general can move before casting it, and then the minion itself can move. A lot of the time you're going to be able to get value out of it. Um, in almost exactly the same way you would a Mist Dragon. Um, and of course it is awesome with Flame Wreath. There's two more triggers if you play it right. So that massively increases Flame Wreath's ceiling. You know, you could do on turn 5, Flame Wreath, Juxtaposition, Backstep, Blink for 4 triggers. Um, plus the attack for 2 if, if needed. Um, while, you know, moving things around, you can obviously, because each of these triggers is independent, you can hit different things with them if your opponent has multiple smaller minions. It's a three card combo for five mana. Um, so I'm not, not going to go far, go so far as to say it's broken or whatever, but I think backstep is incredibly efficient. I was very surprised that Miss Dragon Seal got nerfed instead of Juxtaposition, because I always thought Juxtaposition was the stronger card. Um, because it can also be removal. And having it be having it cost zero is um you know that there's a world of a difference between zero and one and one and two and having them both cost one seems like it sort of smooths out the power imbalances more maybe they just wanted to have one card that was really strong and one card that was a bit weaker and this is sort of in between the two but i think this is kind of this is probably on, on par with Jux's position as far as power level goes. You can't affect your opponent's minions with it, but you can move two things, which is pretty cracked. Um, trivia in, we have a Mercurian Pendant. I really like this design. It's an artifact for one mana. Three durability gives it Provoke. 
Two durability gives it flying, one durability gives it celerity. As an aside, I love how many cards oh, these cards cost one, by the way. I think cards costing one in Duelist 2 is so important. Um, and basically any one cost card is playable because you're always looking to dump stuff out of your hand to make space for your five drops. So anything that costs one and does something you actually care about is great. Um, and they I think they've given us quite a lot of those. I think this design is very cool. I believe it doesn't stack. Like once you've lost three durability, you don't have to provoke anymore. So you don't get flying and celerity for the last one. So kind of triggering this deliberately is, is interesting. But it's worth noting that um, if I understand correctly, if you have two durability at the start of your turn, you can fly to something, attack, then you go to one durability and you have celerity and you attack again. So the, I guess the idea is like you have provoke, you encourage your opponent to hit the artifact and then you can fly some fly to something and attack twice. It's quite a lot of rules text for one mana, but it does rely on your opponent setting you up a little bit unless you can ping it yourself. Like this is very good with things like um, uh, Blood Tear Alchemist, which whether that's worth the combo, like spending you know, Blood Tear being two mana makes this a little bit iffy, I would say. Um, but it's kind of interesting. I, I, I think I think this card's quite good. In Gauntlet, maybe less so. Again, there is an extent where, like, there is an extent to which any one mana card that affects the board in any reasonable way is worth playing in two draw. And this pro this fits into that bill pretty well. Like giving a general provoke for a turn is quite annoying. Um, Drain morale. Give all minions minus one minus zero for one mana. This does stretch the definition of things I'd want for one mana a little bit, but I actually think this card is not terrible. It can counter Wraithlings, which is quite useful. Um, it doesn't prevent your opponent from buffing or sacrificing them, but if your opponent plays a Wraithling Swarm or something, you have a kind of clean answer to it with this. Um, and sometimes it can help make good trades. The card that uh, reduced... The card that gave minus one power to everything next to it, Sand Howler, was always more impactful than I would have thought, although a big part of it was that it also reduced uh, your general's power, which this doesn't. It is a permanent, though. Um, so I think there's going to be some boards where this is quite strong, but certainly in Gauntlet, I, I don't think I want this. I don't think this reliably does anything. Ancestral Vessel. 2 mana, 2 2 minion. Dying Wish, summon a Wind Dervish on the space. So if this dies on your turn, it essentially hits for 4. If it dies on their turn, I assume the Wind Dervish goes away at the end of the turn and does nothing. But maybe it lasts till your turn. I think the difference between the card where it goes away at the end of their turn and the card where it lasts until your turn is massive. Like, the one where it goes away in their turn is probably bad, and the one where it goes away in your turn, even if it dies on their turn, is probably fantastic. Um, I think you still, like in Gauntlet, you still pick this just fine, I think. It trades with stuff. I don't think I'd pick it over a Healing Mystic or something, um, unless I had a lot of Dervish synergy, but even then, it doesn't reliably activate it, so... You're kind of... If you're trying to get the Dervish out, it doesn't do enough. And if you're hoping to value trade with it, it is... not really that much better than Skyrock Golem unless your opponent has multiple low toughness minions or targets in the area. Um, but if it does happen to be that if they kill this on their turn, the Wind Dervish sticks around until your turn and you get to attack with it. You know, that makes it trade a lot better. Um, so, if that's the case, I think this card is... Go goes up to fine. Decent. Onto Abyssin, we have the Elder Chain Cultist. Form on a 4-4. Dying Wish, the next minion you play with base cost 4 or more, costs 4 less. This card is cool as hell. I think this is... I, lo I love to see this. Um, because, A, this is a dorky 4-drop. That doesn't hit that hard, but your opponent doesn't want to kill it. Um, which means it's not unlikely that both players will have minions in play. Which I, 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 know. I really like cards that can engineer that situation, as opposed to just one player, you know, repeatedly staying ahead of the other. Um, two, this makes expensive cards more flexible and more playable. And then three, it also plays well into different synergies. Like, it's a Dying Wish card. 
you can sacrifice it, you know, this into Dark Fire Sacrifice, discount something by six. So you can play your Zur. Oh my god, this card is so good with Zurel. Is that gonna be a deck? Maybe I will get into constructed. I would play Elder Chain Cultist Zorel dot deck. That sounds hilarious. Someone please do that for me and tell me if it's good. Um, in Gauntlet, I think this card's brilliant as well. Like you're always there always are higher cost cards in your deck. Being able to play this and then double spell with two big minions is brilliant. Being able to play a 4-4 that they don't want to kill is brilliant. Um, especially as Abyssian has Shadow Reflection. So sticking minions near their stuff is always valuable. Um, and of course, it, you know, if you have a... Well, any big minion is good, but particularly Spectral Revenant is very good with. Um, and it's, you know, that card isn't super hard to pick up, I think, in the draft. Um, but even just any random large golem or whatever, this card is great with. Like playing this into, oh god, this into Ritual Banishing is good as well, right? Ritual Banishing plus a 6 drop. This on 4, Ritual Banishing plus Vorpal Reaver or something. Like, yeah, you're expending cards, but the main thing is, like, you killed their thing and played a huge threat on the same turn. That's, that's well worth it. Um, the card advantage or disadvantage in this case is not as big of a deal because it's 2 draw. But the tempo advantage matters a huge amount. Bad Omen. Minion zero mana zero one with Death Watch. This gains plus one plus zero. Um, now I am a huge Rite of the Undervolt apologist, and I don't really like this card. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's fine. I the Death Watch synergy is always the Death Watch synergy in Abyssian and the Swarm synergies for that matter. We're always awkward and wonky and kind of bad until they gave us the Lilith Bloodborne spell. That's not going to happen in 2-draw. Um, but there isn't that much AoE, right? So playing Wraithling Swarm isn't super bad, but generally speaking, when I was playing Ladder, I always found it better to play aggro. With, like, you cut all of the wonky stuff that relies on you sticking 5 Wraithlings in play, and you just put in more 2 mana 3 twos and Dark Seeds, and you just kill them. Um, and in Gauntlet, I always much prefer playing more stable strategies for the Abyssian. I think Abyssian tends to be good with either aggro or control are fine, but you want something that's reliable, such that you can either chip them down reliably or survive reliably in order to kill them with Shadow Novas, because that was always... Like, you just, your deck usually has two or three Shadow Novas in it, and you don't need anything else. That's your win con. So, trying to get fancy with Ray things is like not really worth it. Um, now, this, this causing zero is pretty enticing, but I think there's going to be too many games where it doesn't do anything. I am very willing to be proven wrong. I mean, I'm willing to be wrong about everything, but like this in particular, if it turns out that this is just cheap and aggressive enough that you can re reliably make it a 3-1 and then draw up with right to the end of... Oh, even that's not that good. Like, you can just put one mana 3-1s in your deck if you want. Um, yeah, I don't love it. I don't love it. Soul Scythe, 2 mana 3-2. Hoping Gambit destroy a nearby allied minion to draw two cards. So Dream Shaper was one of the most important cards in... Duelist one, right? Dream Shaper, one of the strongest and most important engines in the entire entire game was the Vitruvian Golem package. Specifically, Golem Metallurgist, v uh, Dream Shaper, and Celebrant. So Metallurgist, 2 on a 2-3, your first Golem each turn costs one less. Celebrant was a 2 on a 1-4 that placed a mana tile near itself, both of those neutral. And then Dream Shaper, the Vitruvian class card, 2 on a 2-2, with when you played it, if you had another Golem, it drew two cards. So your two drops didn't cost you cards in hand and you could splurge out a bunch of cheap bodies in play without running out of gas and also while digging through your deck to find the next pieces up the curve. Um, this also allowed you to, you know, the ramp cards were really, really useful for Cataclysmic Fault, uh, which was the main deck 
uh, at the time. That was the, that was the Vitrugan deck in the end of uh, Duelist 1. Um, and it was, you know, in terms of, like, I think it won, if I remember correctly, Fault won the the last big tournament, or at least there was a Fault deck in the top four. Um, it might have actually been the, the eventual winner, I don't remember exactly. Um, but it was up there, you know, it was up there with Wanderer and all the other top tiers because of Dream Shaper. This card, A, is in 2-draw, where card draw is much less important. B, costs you tempo by sacrificing something. Now, I mean, there's a cute thing where you play this, right? It costs zero, and then you play this, and you draw two, and you've made a 3-2 and saved your two cards back. It's not really the same as making a 1-4 that stays in play and provides a mana tile so you can stay ahead of your opponent even more. Uh, and then drawing two cards anyway. And I think outside of sacrificing Wraithlings, which again are awkward and hard to come by, um, this card is a little bit painful. That said, I'm still picking it in Gauntlet because it's a 2-drop. I mean, it's a 3-2, not a 2-3, so it's a bit awkward, but um, it's still a 2-drop, and I think there's going to be situations where actually I'm running a little bit low on gas, so I'm just going to kill this other 2-drop and draw 2, and that's okay. Um, Abyssians can run very low curve decks, right? I mentioned being a Rite of the Undervolt apologist. Um, but I think Rite of the Undervolt is also a bit awkward for this card because instead of playing this, I could play Rite of the Undervolt and not lose as much tempo, right? I don't have to, I don't have to play a two card combo. This card doesn't stack very well with Rite of the Undervolt, which wants to kind of be the only card draw spell you play, right? You just want to draw one right, and that's it, and then you play that and it finds you the next one if you need it. So running more card draw with right is a bit bad. Um, so I think I think I don't love this. Um, that said, the fact that they've printed two cheap Death Watch related cards um, does bring me hope that maybe there'll be more in the next expansion, or more Dying Wish cards, more cheap Dying Wish cards. Like if you've got this with cheap Dying Wishes that have a good impact, right? If there's like, for the sake of argument, let's say they make a 2 mile 1-1 one, one, and when it dies you get a 3-3. Three, three. I would play that with Soul Scythe. Or especially if it was like a 1 mana 0 1 that died and give you a 3 2 or something like, you know, that kind of card where like you can sacrifice it and you're not behind on tempo because it's giving you some other value. Right now, there's not a lot of good cheap Dying Wish minions, I don't think. Um, but that's what's really needed for a card like this to shine. Like sacrificing this feels a bit awkward, right? Because this is a 4 drop. Um, I think a lot of the time this is going to die by just plowing into your opponent's 4 drop. It's an option though, right? You can kill it, draw two, and then play your big big dumb. Um, so the, the the option is there, but you're spending six mana to discount four mana and two cards to get two cards and a three two at that point. So you see where the inefficiencies start to stack up, right? Moving on to Magma, we have Time Cloak Coiler, three mana two five. At the end of your turn, give your general plus two plus oh until they move or teleport. I like that a lot. I think, especially in Gauntlet, I think this card's I think this card's really good in Gauntlet, actually. Like it's an okay on curve body. 2-5 is nothing to write home about, but um, you know, it can trade with a 3-2 and survive a little bit, which is better than nothing. It's good against you know, Wraithlings and 2-2s, little tokens. But I think the ability is fantastic. Because even if you pretend it doesn't last. If you play this, your opponent, your general is a four two, is four attack for a turn. So your opponent's face pressure is kind of really neutered. It's going to be very difficult for them to attack your face without losing minions or losing unacceptable amounts of HP on their minions. And then if their general ends the their turn next to yours, like if they want to trade with the face, it's even worse for them because not only, you know, if they wanted to attack you for two, they take four back, but also you can hit them for four again. Um. It's not bad, like, artifacts are always, you always want to have artifacts up when you're getting attacked, but then they go away and you feel bad about it. And this card that you've also got a minion, um, is this good in Constructed? Probably not, but in Gauntlet, I think this is really, really strong, actually. I think playing this on, on turn two or so, right, just as the, as the battle starts to be joined and your opponent's looking to pressure, and especially if you can find yourself next to your next to something from your opponent, or even just like to put your general next to a tile they want to occupy so that you can get that value trade. Um, yeah, that's that's a lot of text for a 3 mana 2-5, I think. Anachronize, 
Form on a spell. Destroy minions that were summoned since your last turn. That's very good. Um, it is four mana. But, I mean, I think this is going to be a constructed stable. If you're playing Control Magma and you clear their board and they have to develop another board and, well, whoops, Control Z, try again. I think that's good. Is this good in Gauntlet? Probably. Um, you know, if you're... Nah, no, this is good. If you're ahead, right, your opponent has nothing in play. You're pressuring them. They play something to defend themselves. You anachronize. Control Z, try again. If you're behind, they're pressuring you. It doesn't deal with their minions that are already in play, which is very painful. But if you manage to... Like, if you play a minion and they trade their existing minion into it and then play something new, you can play this. The downside is that until very late in the game, it doesn't allow you to swing the tempo back. But in the late game, it's very, very good because you can play this and a minion to try and steal the initiative. Um, I think it's the sort of powerful card that will still get replaced a lot. Um, you know, if you draw this the turn after they play their Grandmaster Zay, you're like, well, this is embarrassing, isn't it? Um, but, you know, Egg Morph, Magma removal in general has that problem. Egg Morph, Natural Selection, even... Um, what was that spell from Duelist 1 that dealt damage to everything equal to its power? That card was cracked. Um, oh, the name escapes me. All of those, you know, Magma spells are always... Removal spells are always conditional. This was no exception. I think it joins the, the hallowed halls of, like... Put this in your controlling Magma decks and use it to kill their stuff when appropriate. Progenitor, 4 mana 3 5, opening gambit, summon two hatchling eggs nearby your general. And the hatchlings are just two ones. I think that's pretty good, honestly. Um, this is, a, I mean, compared to a hailstone golem, you lose 1 1 of stats for the two eggs. I actually think two eggs. There's going to be board states where you're behind and this does nothing. But if they're hitting the eggs, they're still not hitting anything else. And you've got a 3 5, so that's not completely terrible. And I also think there's going to be... Let's say you play this on curve, right? You play this on turn two. You can simply move your general away from the center, you know, towards a monotile, say, or play this before you move your general. It does impose a little bit of a constraint. It's like the problem I always have with Kron is that I want to replace before I make my decision on whether to play, you know, which five drop to play. And Kron wants you to replace after playing him. So it's, it's always a bit awkward because there's always something better in your deck. But... You know, similarly, this card, if you want to, if it constrains your movement, that is a cost, a real cost, but I think you get a decent amount of value. If your opponent commits, like, pings to clearing the hatchlings or whatever, you've not really lost anything for doing so. Like, yeah, it's a bit smaller than a, a vanilla four drop, right? It's smaller than Hailstone Golem, but still eats two drops for breakfast, still trades favorably into most three drops, hits their general three times, and then you also get these eggs, your opponent's going to be like, oh, I should kill those so they don't get extra value. I think this card's quite strong. And it's a common too, so you'll see it a lot. Or, well, assuming the weights are skewed in such a way. Once a Vanna, we have the Bubble Smith. Two mana... Oh, it's a Vesper. Didn't notice that. Two mana Vesper, 2-3. Opening Gambit. Give your general... The next time this would take damage, reduce that damage to 1. This card is phenomenal. Um, I didn't realize it was a Vesper, which makes it even better because... Useful Vespers are so... There's a lot of Vesper cards you're like, oh, I don't want to take this over this other decent card just because it's got Vesper written on it, but I need Vespers for whatever synergy. So having a card that's just like a decent two-drop that's a Vesper, right? You're, you're joining the Crystal Cloakers of the world um, is brilliant. And the effect is amazing, actually. Uh, there will be certain... Certainly there'll be plenty of times where, like, you play this and it saves you one damage, right, from their general or whatever. That's still not nothing. That's half a healing mystic. Um... But more importantly is the ceiling on it is very high in that it allows your general to trade into big minions. Um, if your opponent's general is far away from you, or far enough away from you, they can't immediately attack you. Or if they have an artifact on, this can save a lot of pressure. I'm a big fan of the, like, your general can't die cards, like uh, Winterblade and... What was the spell from Duelist 1? God, there's so many cards that I haven't seen in years. I'm trying to <laughs> starting to figure out all the names, which is a bit sad. 
Um, no, doesn't matter. Uh, the card that made you invulnerable for a turn. Um, I really liked those cards, and obviously they work on more than one hit, but this is similar enough and on a cheap enough, efficient enough body with a relevant minion type. The, I think this card's good. Just a really solid role player. Obviously in Gauntlet you pick because it's a 2 mana 2-3 two, with text you care about. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of the time it won't do that much, but I think there'll also be times where you're like, oh, I'm really glad I played this two turns ago. Um, because now my opponent's played an 8-8 eight, eight, and it's really awkward for me to... You know, I have to hit this with my face to kill it efficiently. Felgia, 5 mana 5-5 five, five minion. Opening Gambit, both players lose a mana crystal. The 4-3 that steals that mana, this is not. Is this card good? I feel like this is kind of matchup dependent. It is notable that if you're playing against the Bissian, their best cards cost 7. Um, and if you're playing against an opponent like that, um, it can help. It's also very good with Crystal Wisp because you preventing them from getting to 6 mana is kind of uh, preventing them from getting to 5 mana is pretty impactful. And that kind of makes up for the mediocre-ish body because if they're only playing a 4 drop afterwards then you're pretty you're pretty happy about that. I think in Gauntlet you will play this card like if you're in a lowish curve deck, it's just it's just good enough. Um, if you're in a controlling deck or a higher curve deck, you don't want this. But I think there's there's going to be drafts where you know you've mostly got cheaper cards, cheap creatures, and this is kind of an alternative to card draw as a way to turn that into a win condition. Where like if your curve's low and you're just playing your two cards off the top each turn, but your opponent doesn't have any mana, then you know. It's not nothing. It just helps you maintain your tempo advantage and keep your opponent off their double spell turns or their win conditions. That seems fine. Mementos. One mana spell. Summon two joint mementos. The memento is a 1 1 wall with Dying Wish draw card. Honestly, this card seems good. I feel like the awkward draw two is okay. Again, right, this is. Another draw spell in Duelist 2, and they're all... All the draw spells in this game feel kind of... Especially in Gauntlet, where you're often playing a higher curve. And you can't build around them as much. And this is a delayed draw. You know, you're... You have limited control over when or even whether you get to draw these cards. On the flip side, a 1 mana spell that makes two 1 1 walls is just kind of good on its own. Like, I feel like you... I feel like you would almost, especially in Constructed, I feel like you would play this even if they didn't draw, right? If you're playing some kind of deck that already has high card velocity, are you playing Arcanists or something and you just want like cheap interactive spells to protect you and frustrate your opponent? It's sort of like old Gravity Well. Um, it makes fewer bodies, but they can attack and they draw a card. I think this card's really strong, actually. Just as like, it's just a quietly good role player. I think the fact that it's a the fact that it draws two is actually not... That sounds cool, but it's, it's two draw. You don't really need that. Um, but I think this actually affects the board like a decent amount for a one mana spell. And one mana spells are, are great in two draw, right? You, you weave them into your curve. You can trigger your arcanists. So like... I think this card's actually really useful. Even if you never draw a card off it, or it takes several turns to get the value because your opponent's avoiding it. If your opponent's avoiding them, that's even better. Um, yeah, if your opponent's avoiding them to, to not draw the card, that's a huge amount of table space you just gained. Brilliant. We have some neutrals. Synchronic Abomination. Meltdown is back. 8 mana, 8, 8. Whenever there are 8 units nearby this, destroy them. I'm assuming that doesn't hit generals. Uh, <laughs> that would be very funny. This card, I don't know why you would put this in your deck. Um, even in Gauntlet, I don't think this is good. Um, it is funny, though. I appreciate that kind of line of text, you know? It's just entertaining. I guess you could set it up with walls. 
I don't know. I feel like it's going to be very difficult to make this one work. Deja Vu Engineer. Four mana, three, five. Opening Gambit, destroy a nearby allied minion, then resummon it on that space and give it plus one, plus one. I was always a bit underwhelmed with Consuming Breath. Is that the name of it? Consuming something. In Duelist 1, which was a two mana spell with the same effect as this Opening Gambit. Um, especially in Gauntlet. The fact that this is on a minion, obviously it's more expensive, which makes it less good for like a streamlined Dying Wish combo deck. But those don't really exist. And the cards for it don't really exist. This, um, allowing you to even just heal and pump a, your three drop is pretty good, right? On a four mana three five. This just allowing you to like, I mean, obviously it's really good with the, the four mana four four that makes something cost less. Um, it's really good with Sarlacc, if you've got a Sarlacc kicking around. Um... But even just using this on a minion to pump it is fine. That's a Hailstone Golem's worth of stats. Yes, you can't use the pump to then attack, but you've still got a pumped minion. And you can like hit them in the face and then kill it and heal it. Um, I think this card's great, actually. It's just like a really solid card that you'll pretty much always pick. Even if you play it on its own with nothing else in play, it's not that embarrassing. And the ceiling on it, you know, actually comboing with a Dying Wish minion, when that, put, when that comes up, that's going to be, there's some there's some reasonably high highs. But I think most of the time you're just going to be using it to turn a healing mystic into a 3-4. And that's also great. Um, yeah, I think this is a really nice card. For Constructed, I, I don't rate it so much, I imagine. But it's probably still fine in those sort of decks. I mean, notably, if you've triggered, um, I've forgotten its name, Elder Chain Cultist, uh, then... Hey, look, it costs zero. That's kind of cool, right? <laughs> Being costing four can be an upside. So, yeah, I, th I think this card's neat. Um, and I'm happy to see it, actually. Arcane Amplifier. Three mana, three, three. Spells you play that deal damage, deal plus one damage. This card probably sucks. But, um, notably, it's not Songhai. And we haven't really seen... I, I believe this is the first time spell damage has been available to non-Songhai factions in Duelist. Off the top of my head, Abyssian have a decent number of damaging spells, including a number of them that go face, and cost reduction mechanics, right? You can Darkfire Sacrifice something to set this up so that you can do more in the same turn. Um, this with Grasp of Agony is pretty sick. 4 damage AoE. Build your own mechanical war beast. That seems quite good. Um, even Lionar might benefit from it, right? Your Holy Emus, you have True Strikes. Um, probably some other cards I'm not thinking of. I guess technically Cataclysm. Um, but I don't think that they go in the same deck. Vanar have a couple. Yeah, this is interesting. I think compared to the the one mana artifact that did it in Songhai, this is nowhere near the same level of card, right? This is not even remotely in the same league. And in Gauntlet, I think this card's going to be... If you pick this, and then you have to play it on turn one, you're going to feel pretty bad. If you pick this and you're trying to combo off with it, and you need to wait until seven mana so you can play this into your two Phoenix Fires... I think you're also going to be a bit sad about that. I think this card is not great, but it is a normal effect in the game, and I'm interested to see if anyone can come up with a cool use for it that isn't too inefficient. Um, it is at least card efficient, right? If you're playing enough spells. But I think, you know, Eight Gates and Crescent Spear, this is not. Balance changes. Um, there are actually some decent balance changes here that are quite uh, impactful as well in terms of like potentially, you know, having a meaningful game impact as opposed to just making cards better or worse. Um, this one in particular is so a new Blazehound now costs one if the enemy general took damage this turn. That is 
Phenomenal. One mana, four, three. In two draw. Now this is a great use for all these draw spells they're giving us, right? You hit them with literally anything. Your face, a Wraithling, a Void Pulse, whatever. You dump out some one mana, four threes. And, um, you know, right at the end of Vault, waiting in the wings. Ready to redraw. Cyan Second Wish, waiting in the wings. Ready to redraw. This is real good. Um, yeah, this is... <laughs> Black Town's gone through various iterations over the years. I, this is the strongest it's ever been, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Archon Spellbinder, let's get some minor nerf. I didn't actually realize they made it an 8-8. I, I must have missed that change. Um, I know this card has fluctuated in terms of its exact text and how much play it was supposed to see. I think it's kind of back to its old self now a little bit. Um, which I think is fine. I, this card should exist, you know? It's useful to have some counterbalance for song high decks, for super efficient control decks, and for people just generally exploiting two draw. Lady Locke now works on tokens, kind of, uh, in that she buffs minions you summon with plus minus one, but minions you play gain provoke. So tokens gain plus minus one, non-tokens will also gain provoke, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how to read this. This is cool. Like, Lady Locke not working on tokens was such a huge blow. I love this card, and a lot of other people do as well. She's very popular. I will miss the old one still, like, the, the Lady Locke that worked on everything. Oh, it was so cool playing like her with Wraithlings or whatever and just like felt like you were doing it, you know? So, I think this card is... It's now like, you can pick it again. <laughs> um, but I, I... I'm still sad about it, you know? Riftwalker um, down to a 2-1. I've never played this card, actually. I think it was... I think it was added since I last opened the client. But apparently it's very good, which doesn't surprise me. Hitting two things for two damage from any range is really strong. Um, and sometimes it'll do even more than that. So I'm not hugely surprised that it's been nerfed. Senri now destroys a minion and summons a 2-2 copy of it. I am sad to see that. I, I love a good Senri. I guess they wanted... This, this change kind of buffs Dying Wish minions, right? Um, in that your opponent will still get the Dying Wish trigger. It still works against Lantern Fox, except not quite so well, because Lantern Fox... The whole point of Lantern Fox is it has more than two toughness, so you can get two Phoenix Fires out of it. Um, yeah, this makes... This, this is so much less clean than the old design as well, but obviously the nerf... You know, they felt it was warranted, so I'm not going to complain. Um, oh, it also makes it much worse against Obelisks. That sucks. Um, or is good for the ob Obelisk players. Choose you. Choose your poison. Chrysalis Burst. Now two mana for the old Progenitor effect. I feel like that's kind of good. Uh, you probably still don't want... This card does nothing in so many situations, whereas Progenitor, at least it was a 5-4, you know? Like, you got the extra body as well. So it was, even if you had played it for no value, you could still run it out as a minion. And then if you were playing it to get eggs, you also got this extra 5-4. I mean, this being 2 mana means you can do something else as well. But Progenitor, you would get a 5-4, whereas this, you can play this and play a 2-drop, which is nowhere near the same. So, you know, we're not at the same heights. But 2 mana for this effect, I mean, seems like it might do something. I guess eggs are also a lot worse now than they were in Progenitor's heyday, so. Um, I would be surprised if there's so much play. And I, I certainly am not looking to pick this in, in draft. I will still pick Zenry. Zenry is still fine. Totally fine. Actually, is that even true? Because the whole point of Zenry and Gauntlet is you take Bone Reapers with it and your opponent loses the game. Whereas here, it's like, eh, it kills it, I guess. <laughs> Updated Golden Weights. I don't know what they were before or how these work exactly. I guess we're going to get more Azure Lions. So how this works. And I'm certainly not going to bother reading through all of this. We'll just see how it plays out. Um, but we do have a couple more uh, pages of cards to look at. So these are the Wave 3 Founders Collection cards, of which there are five. 
with uh, resurrecting some lovely sprites. Actually, I don't recognize this one. This must have been a sprite they didn't use. Um, as a side note, I, I like the decision to use old art because presumably the team doesn't have access to the resources necessary to pay artists of this caliber. Um, but also there's all this awesome old art kicking around that you may as well use, right? Um, and it's cool to, it's almost funny to be like, hey, this card is now completely different. It's kind of jarring, but also it's neat. Um, so we have Chu E, 3 mana 1 4 mech. After this, destroys a minion, it fully heals, gains attack equal to that minion's attack, and gains the ability of that minion. Um, that's cool, but I don't really see anyone putting this on the table. It reminds me of Skarzig, um, which was like a 1 2 that if it killed something, it transformed into like this mega thing, if I remember correctly. Um, cool card. It was basically only played by Skarzig, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, because, you know, too many hoops to jump through in a game where sticking minions, even big minions, is so unreliable. Um, that said, it's funny and cool. And, you know, if you play this and they don't kill it and you have the Shadow Reflection or whatever, then go you. You did the thing. <laughs> Um, Albie's Prophet 3 mana 3 3 opening gambit if you've played a spell this turn deal 1 damage to a unit uh, that's fine doesn't hit generals which does take away a lot of utility in terms of just pushing damage clearing artifacts um, but you know pings are always appreciated it is an arcanist which is quite nice um, the fact that you can't actually play it on the three and get value out of it, though, is going to be understated. It's awkward. In Gauntlet, I think this card is mediocre. I'm not a huge fan of Blood Tear in Gauntlet either because it's so in inefficient for what you do get. The ping is good, but the mana cost behind the ping and the body you get is underwhelming, and I suspect that Albi's Prophet will be much the same. Psionic Resonator. 5 on a 3 5, also an Arcanist. When you replace a card or play a spell, deal 1 damage to enemies in the same column as this. Now that's a 5 drop, but it's a 5 drop with some hella text. Enemy, so it does hit face as well. Now, this is notably extremely good with that new Lionel spell. Um, if you play, what's that called? Augury? Augury. Let me zoom in a bit more. If you play this with Augury, that's 4 damage. Um, that's pretty sick. Now that is 6 mana. But 6 mana for a 4 damage AoE. That's a Mechanical War Beast, aka the best card in the game. So um, I think that's pretty fine, right? That's kind of on par with that sort of play. And if it sticks, well, you, you're going to win the game. Uh, in Gauntlet... Ah, you just... You just, you just Probably just play it, right? I think if you've got some cheap spells kicking around or extra replace enablers, you play this. Oh, that's a thought. It also does two damage in a column with Archaeomancer. Um, Archaeomancer? Ethermaster. Archaeomancer is a magic card. It's late and I'm a little tired. Pummy the Storm Chaser. 4 mana 3 4 minion with airdrop. After this attack, steal 2 damage to joined enemies and switch positions with the farthest joined enemy minion. This is Thunderhorn, kind of. Um, it's Thunderhorn with less stats, with airdrop, and it only deals 2 damage chained. My gut feeling is I don't like this. Like, it has to attack. Airdrop is cool because you can put it in safe places, or you can kind of like force your opponent to spill it, split up dealing with it. Um... But I think if you manage to hit with this, the payoff isn't that big. Like, if you hit your opponent's things with Thunderhorns, it, like, obliterated their board. Here, two damage is obviously, you know, you'll take it, it's fine. Um, you know, if this card had Rush, it would be phenomenal, right? You, you'd pay six mana for that, maybe. Um, but the... 
as it is. I don't rate it. I think the, the airdrop might be enough source that it works out. You know what I mean? Like, it does give the card a little bit of juice, but gut feeling is no. I would still play it in Gauntlet if I didn't, I wasn't desperate for cuts, but I often am. <laughs> I wouldn't be too embarrassed if it was in a, a bucket with something else that was good. Temporal Sage Lily, another Arcanist, 4 mana 4 5. Opening Gambit. Teleport the minion directly in front of this, backwards one space. If a unit occupies that space, deal 2 damage to both instead. This card is excellent, I think. 4 mana 4 5 is an on curve body, messing with your opponent's positioning or hitting the things in the face. Both great. Arcanist type, great. Um, now, I think for Arcanists to really work, especially in 2 draw, we need more cheap ones. They need to be. Decent two and three mana arcanists. Um, this being four mana, it means that like it doesn't curve into Albi Sage particularly well. So the fact that it is an arcanist is not as relevant. It's just kind of a nice upside. I think if you happen to have Albi Sage also in your deck, but I think you'll just play this regardless. Like this is kind of in terms of the damage, it's pretty similar to a four cost Dancing Blades. Um, it can hit two things, which is brilliant. Messing with their position is brilliant. Um, you know, you can... It only hits minions, doesn't it, generals, but... Um, when it says minion and then unit. So unit must imply minion or general. Does that mean that that 8 mana thing that can destroy things around it... Can destroy generals? Is that what this card is supposed to do? You like surround it and your opponent. You put this next to your opponent and play a bunch of ray things or whatever and it one shots them. Does it do that? Because if so, that's awesome. That's such a good meme card. Like it's probably not going to win any tournaments or whatever, but like I played, I played a Nemovore deck for a while and it was so, it was, it was funny, but it was surprisingly effective. Just like, it was like a mid-range Songhai deck that just had a bunch of on-curve minions into Nemovore, into like Panda Tenshiri, or just playing two drops. Um, and it was surprisingly effective. And I wonder if you could do the same thing with this, where you just have like a deck that's like mostly normal, and you have this and like a couple of token makers, and you just play this and hope. Or you cost reduce it with uh, the cultist thing and then play other stuff to combo with it in the same turn. Um you know, I would try that, right? You play the... I keep forgetting its name. You play the Elder Chain... It is Cultist. You play the Elder Chain Cultist. You Darkfire Sack it. Next turn, you play this for two mana. You play double Wraithling Swarm and, like, move something into position and you blow up your opponent's general. Please tell me that's how it works because that is awesome. <laughs> that, that would be so cool. I really hope that's what it does. If it does that, my rating goes way up. Like... Again, it's a meme card, but like, I love meme cards that can actually win a game. Uh, that's it for the new cards. I did want to look at the last patch as well. Which sort of tried to shake up the meta a little bit. Um, someone in the comments might tell me whether they, whether they were successful or not. Um... But I can at least give my thoughts. So Alex is now an 8 drop that gives something celerity this turn. So you're basically never... This this is pretty useless, like, played out of hand. You need to stick something first and then play Alex. That's probably still okay. Um, you can... Play a Grandmaster Zir and attack for 10. That seems like the... Like, people... Grandmaster Zero sticks a lot because it's got so much health. So if it's in reach of your opponent, it would work. It is notable that this plus Magnetize fits into 9 mana. So you can play something big in a safe spot and then Magnetize plus Alex for a, a cheeky kill. So that kind of seems reasonable. I'm a big Magnetize fan. I love Magnetize. I think, you know, yeah, it's a card that you replace sometimes, but like it does a true strike impression. It does a... Juxtaposition impression. It does a killing your opponent impression. It's a good card. Uh, Silverguard Square. 
is now a 1-1 one, one that with that gives allies directly in front and behind your general plus one plus one. Presumably it can buff itself. Um it seems okay, I mean Lionel, if if this was in a Rights of the Undervolt enabled faction, I would probably just play the hell out of this. Um yeah, if this was an Abyssian card, it'd be awesome. You play this, you sack it, or you play this and you write at the end of all. You play this, you um, trade with it, trigger Death Watch. You play this, you Soul Shatter Pact. In Lionar, you've got War Storage. <laughs> Not really the same. Um, they talk about Skywind Glaives. Um, uh, seems okay. I wouldn't be surprised if this saw play. Like, it's, again, it's 2-draw. Um, and if you play this with another minion, right, you can have a 2-2 that buffs the other minion you played for one mana, which I think that's I think that's well worth it, actually. Uh, a little bit of a positional cost there, but I like this a lot more than the old one, which just didn't do anything. It's just a body. Um, and of course, it still works with um, Holy Immolation, and then you get value afterwards. Artifact Defiler is gone. Great. I have played... I have 1,300 hours in Duelist 1 and never cast an Artifact Defiler. Gitatsu. Deal one damage to a minion. Draw a card at end of turn. Fantastic card. I don't think Songhai needs this. They've already got enough cheap spells to draw cards and good ways to interact with the board. But you know what? I'm a spell hey lover. I, I'll take it. Um, this card's really good and presumably still really good. Celestial Phantom's back to its old self. Great. I always like this card. And it's nice to have something... That plays well with Songhai's repositioning shenanigans, but isn't... Hold on, let me zoom in. You can see the cards properly. Um, yeah, it's really nice that this card is something that synergizes well with Songhai's displacement cards, but isn't just like Herder and Big Hit Face. Like, it's not a Gorehorn or some other, you know, Hamon Blade Seeker or whatever. It's like, no, it's terrible at attacking your opponent's face. All it does is trade with minions. But it trades up, and, you know, sometimes you can kill two things that are like... Big toughness minion. Like, this is so good against Ironcliff Guardians and stuff. So, And it synergizes with the inner focus, too. So, again, it's nice to have a card that is more of a minion-based, trading-based, control-based approach to using all of those cards that move your things around and grant them rush without uh, feeding into, like, I give my Lantern Fox haste, it can attack, I get a Phoenix Fire, now I'm going to hit you in the face. Or, like, teleporting minions onto your opponent to kill them. So I'm glad to see it back. Even if the card is, you know, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's solid. You generally play this. Um, oh yeah, this is obviously a staple in Gauntlet. Um, Astral Phasing is gone. I think I've I have cast an Astral Phasing. I think I've cast it once. Once or twice. Cosmic Flash. Also not a super good. I, I, I loved Cosmic Flash when I started. And it probably is uh, a lot better in 2-draw. Um, in Gauntlet, this card is kind of fine, right? You sort of... The two-card expenditure is a problem, and you'll just get martyrdomed or dispelled and feel really sad is the main issue with it. Because uh, it's not great as, like, a proactive pump spell. You play it, and then you attack for one more. Hooray! But, you know, it's all about that extra toughness and provoke, but you get very punished by removal. Um, but, you know, it's a neat card. You play it sometimes. Syzygy. Uh, oh, they just changed the effect. Black Solus, 4 mana, 4 4. Opening Gambit, put two Wraithlings into your action bar. Um, yeah, maybe. I like the description here. Swarm Abyss has been a long time fan favorite archetype, but it has been relatively weak for a while. Um, yes. Swarm is bad without Lilith BBS. I, think, I don't think this card fixes that. I think if this card was a 2 mana, 2 3, now you're talking. Um,. I kind of like the old Black Solos where it was just like a huge idiot that got massive. Um, I know they, they nerfed it for good reason, but like it was nice to have a card where if you have like two Wraithlings, it still ruins your opponent's day. Um, one thing this card is quite good with is Wraithling Fury. You get a 4 mana 5 5 flyer. But again, I it's all stuff where you play it and you pass the turn. Like, those two Wraith things probably aren't sticking if you're trying to go off with them. Um, and the, the amount of... You know, 
if this was a 4-5 maybe, just so you're getting a bit more tempo, then the Wraith things become worth it, but you're you're paying a real cost to get two Wraith things, so you then pay a cost to play, and then they, they, they die. Um, so I think, this is assuming the Wraith things cost one. They could make them cost zero. I mean, that just basically summons two Wraith things. They can have a summon two Wraith things. Four mana, four, three, opening gambit, summon two Wraith things. That would be a reasonable card. Reaper of the Nine Moons. Our four mana, four, three, flying, dying wish, teleport the enemy general to this space. I've played against this once or twice in Gauntlet. It didn't seem very threatening. I feel like knocking the power off it like, the whole point of Reaper of the Nine Moons originally was that it hit hard, so it could trade up with stuff or it pressured face and your opponent had to choose between, oh, I don't want to kill it, but I also don't want to get hit by it. Bring it down to four mana. I mean, it carries buffs very well. He put a Shadow Reflection on it. But then, like, when I played against this in Gauntlet, I wasn't, even in Gauntlet, I wasn't afraid of killing it. The effect is splashy, but very, very situational. And, like, yeah, you can fly it into the corner and then sacrifice it but like you've spent a bunch of mana and two cards for that and what have you actually achieved in a lot of a lot of cases right um so you know the old reaper was scary because like it hit hard and was maneuverable and then if you killed it it might yeah it might just summon a two drop but it might summon your seven drop and you're like oh no i'm so dead it was an exciting card Maybe they should just revert it. I, I really liked old Reaper of the Moons. Like, it was scary. You know, it's unpleasant to play against, but it's unpleasant in kind of a funny way, you know what I mean? Like, it's just a cool, splashy card. Twin Fang, down to one mana. Your general has an additional plus one, plus oh, for each time an ally takes damage. Now, this one does seem a fair bit more likely to see play. Twin Fang getting plus two was pretty strong. Uh, Twin Fang at plus one is... Uh, I mean... It's still not hard to get it up to plus three or plus four, right? Adamantite Claws is a four mana card. And this is a one mana card that can do the same thing. Um, the downside is that most of the time getting it up to that many charges requires taking damage. So you won't get the same number of uh, charges. I shouldn't have used that word. Getting it up to the same power requ often requires you to get hit. So you won't have the same number of charges with which to leverage your high attack artifact. Um, but I think one mana, like, I am quite a big fan of all the one mana plus one plus oh artifacts in, um, in Duelist 2 because, like, the card cost is not a big deal and being able to cleanly trade with two threes is, uh, or, like, you know, trade with your two three plus, like, their, so into their Silver Guard Knight or whatever is pretty strong. Like, one mana for th three Phoenix Fires, heavy air quotes, is, like, how I think about it, you know what I mean? In terms of just like temp, the, the amount of your ability to remove stuff. So I think Twin Fang is probably, you know, it has a very high ceiling. It's probably better than a lot of those cards. As long as you can get it started. Glacial Elemental, now a 1 3 with its old text. Um, Glacial is very good. Even in Gauntlet, I, you know, this card is, is pretty strong. And they have printed a very good new Vesper in the new expansion. So I think. Glacial is gonna. It's gonna sing, I hope. Ancient Grove. Uh, now. Also makes a tree when it dies. This card is ne has never particularly been a staple. I mean, the, the change to 6 9 over 7 7 stats is a big upgrade. Even without Sunset Paragon in the game. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just another large, expensive minion. I do. I don't hate it in Gauntlet, like. It is the sort of thing where you, you end up in these scrappy late game board states where, you know, both players have like random two threes left over and stuff. And it is kind of useful f to turn those crappy bodies into crappy bodies that make more crappy bodies that frustrate your opponent's movement. And then you also get a 6-9 that if they removal on it, it still gives you a provoke. So actually, I think this this card is, is a lot of stall and buffing itself to also make it... Uh, 1-1 one, one Provoke when it dies is is pretty substantial because it means that even if you have nothing else in play, which, you know, is, is somewhat of the time going to be the case, this is Duelist, and even if they have removal, they still can't move. <laughs> and that's pretty important. P 
Putrid Dreadflayer is now... 4 mana, 4, 3, Dying Wish, deal 4 damage to nearby enemies. This is the second coming of Nasha. Um, this... This seems by far the most impactful change. Nasha was very good. I was... I thought it would be bad. So Nasha, to be clear, was 4 mana, 3, 3, but when it died, dealt 3 damage to nearby enemies. Or well, it might be nearby everything. I think it hurt your own stuff as well. Um, so this is strictly better than that. And Nasha was really good, especially in Gauntlet. Nasha was amazing in Gauntlet. Um, this is going to be fantastic, I think. Really, really good card. Impossible to trade into in a bunched up board state. Um, you know, so hard to hit with your general. You take eight, killing it. Um, really good with any sacrifice effects, right? This plus the new two drop. You make a three, two. You do a mechanical Warby stay away and you draw two cards. That is enough Dying Wish value. That is enough tempo that I don't mind throwing my 4-drop into the, the 2-drop. This with Darkfire Sacrifice, even better. You get a Holy Immolation, and your next creature costs less. Um, and you can do that out of hand. This is a lot. This is pushed, actually. I think this is a very, very strong card. Um, I'm really surprised this exists, especially as neutral. I mean, Abyssian are obviously going to benefit from it the most, but like, I feel like you're going to see this a lot in Gauntlet. Oh, you get more gold per win. That's nice. Um, that's all the cards I was going to look at today. Um, only took me an hour and 11 minutes. Lovely. Um, such as it is. This was fun. Um, I look forward to playing some Duelist 2 soon. Uh, I'm not going to commit to a specific timing because obviously... Uh, I will want to do it while recording a YouTube video. Um, and I don't know when that's going to happen necessarily, but soon. Um, am I going to jump into ladder? Probably not, because it's more of a commitment. Um, although, if it turns out you can insta-kill people with new meltdown, might have to give that a go. <laughs> uh, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, but in summary, this is cool. I'm, I'm happy to see the devs starting to make cards that aren't just either underwhelming compared to the status quo or more of the same as the status quo. I think it's quite cool to see, um, in particular, new workhorse cards, right? There's a bunch of one mana cards that smooth your deck in this, which those cards, they do fit into existing good stuff decks, but... They also allow you to do weird stuff um, because bad decks that have like a high ceiling get proportionately more value. Right? They sort of get brought up faster than the amount by which good decks get better by having more consistency tools because the good decks in Duelist 2 are already very consistent, um, including in Gauntlet, whereas doing weird stuff when you have Augury that can mulligan your entire hand for one mana um that's amazing <laughs> you just dig so hard for whatever it is you're looking for um or trigger the new 3-5 arcanist four times and wipe the board that's cool too um yeah I, it's neat to see i think even this like this card is scary but it's different you don't you don't just jam this in your iron cliff guardian deck and call it a day you don't just jam this in your iron cliff guardian deck and call it a day there's a lot of Arcanists, and I do think Arcanists... Yes, we need cheap ones, just the same as last time. And Duelist 1. I mean, this is a cheap Arcanist, I guess. Uh, that also draws the spells. Maybe this is kind of all you need to get Songhai Arcanists really going. Actually, honestly, yeah. Songhai Arcanists, you get Rhythm Weaver, you get Backstep, which is two spells in one for one mana, and you get... Um, there's a three-drop Arcanist that pings, which is like, eh. There's the new 4-5 that... Shunts a minion back, pretty good. And then you get Katatsu as well. Um, so you can play so many one mana spells that interact with the board in some way and, and or draw cards. Um, maybe that's enough now. Yeah, I like it. Um, this as well, this is like, you don't just put this in your, I mean, you could put this in a control deck to be honest, the way Abyss index play out, but like, this card enables combos 
more than it just allows you to, okay, yeah, I can play this and then I can double spell with Spectral Revenant and a removal spell. You can do that, but, and in Gauntlet I will, but in Constructed this allows you to power out your stupid 8 mana, destroy everything card, Synchronic Abomination, whatever, right? In a way that is more impactful than just like continuing to play good stuff cards. So I'm happy to see more of these like glue cards that are like a little bit more situational, have different synergies. Um, I think we might still need the next half of the expansion uh, for it to really shake things up compared to the the established god cards of, of Duelist, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing a lot of these cards on the table in draft. I think they're, they're novel. They do different things from the cards that we have without being worse than them. Um, and that is very promising. So, yeah, good job, devs. This is a really cool set of cards, and uh, I'm excited to see how they play out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you had a good time listening to me ramble about cards and forget names of things printed in Duelist 1 in 2018. Um, I, yeah. I'll, I'll see you around. Got some more videos in the pipeline uh, when I have a chance to make them, so hopefully the channel will not be will be non-quiet for a bit while, a bit longer. Thanks all. Have a good evening.